Hey Flute family, what's going on? It's your girl Vivian. Welcome back to my channel. So, it's been a hot minute since I've seen y'all. So, school has started and I've been hitting that pavement going crazy. Um, I have a first semi-week of school video coming out soon. Um, it's going to be in two parts because it's super long, but that'll be coming out soon. Anyway, anyway, reel it back in. Um, so today I'm going to show y'all something that I have been keeping a secret. Um, I was trying to decide whether to make this video or not make this video and let y'all be in it, a part of it. And then I was like, they need to know. <laughs> so anyway, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this. And let's get into this video. So this is something that's like, do I want it? Do I need it? And the answer was yes. So when I was still at the community college, I got put on some different instruments um, to get me familiarized with them. And so I did oboe, I did clarinet, I did uh, saxophone, and then a course flute on top of that. And there was one instrument that I absolutely hated, and it was the clarinet. Well, gave me about three weeks or so on clarinet and figuring out how the whole thing works, I absolutely fell in love with the clarinet. And so it was time for me to move to Wesleyan, where I am now. And I had to give up that clarinet because it belonged to the community college. So, you know, I went on through Wesleyan and did my courses. Last semester, I had to take a woodwind MIT class um, on how to teach woodwind instruments. So we had flute, which obviously I know how to play. So that was really simple to teach that. Um, then we had clarinet. <laughs> And um, the head of the department let me borrow his clarinet. And I absolutely fell in love all over again with the clarinet. So, you know, after talking with my professor and everything and the response I was getting with clarinet, she's like, you're really good at clarinet. And I was like, well, thanks. I said, you know, I have thought about getting one in the past, but I just didn't know. And then um, she was like, you know, a lot of flute players play a secondary instrument. And even though your secondary may be piccolo or uh, alto flute, you can always do another secondary and do it in clarinet. And I was like, okay, first thing that came to my mind, I've been playing flute for 14 years. What is this going to do to mess up my flute playing? And the answer was absolutely nothing. Um, you just have to recognize both of them and it's actually going to help your breath control. So I was like, okay, so I, I thought about it. I talked to my parents. I talked to other professors. I prayed about it. I looked around and I was like, I just don't know. I just don't know. And then um, it got brought up again when we were getting done with clarinet and I had to turn the clarinet brought it, uh, back in. And my professor was like, you need to really like consider this. And I was like, man, I, I just don't know because I mean, I've known flute my whole life. And I was like, well, <laughs> I say my whole life, but like for the past 14 years, I've known flute and that's it. And she's like, you really need to consider this because, you know, the outlook for a future job, if you can double on some kind of other instrument besides flutes, um, you know, the success rate is really high. So I thought about it some more and I made my decision and I got my clarinet. <laughs> So, um, this was a interesting day. Um, let me put this on because I'm going to play it here in a few. So, I, I was looking around online and I'm not like one to, you know, buy 
instruments online without trying them. I always want to try my instruments first, but due to COVID, they were like, uh, no, we're not letting you uh, try instruments. And then um, they're like, the only way you can do that is if you buy like several thousand dollars worth of instruments that we have, we send them to you, you try them out, you pay for the cleaning fee, you pay for the shipping, and I was like, man, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. So, hang on. Two hours later. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my mom was calling me, so I was like, all right, I need to answer this. Anyway, so what I was saying is like, you know, they wanted me to pay all this stuff uh, for the shipping and the cleaning fee and like for the instruments itself, and I was like, you know, I just can't. Uh, do that. So I started shopping around locally and my place that I take uh, my flutes to get them serviced and they're the only people that work on my flutes. Um, I called them and I was like, hey, is there any change you can, um, you know, get a clarinet in? I know y'all really focus on repairs and stuff, but is there any change? And they're like, well, we actually have some here in the store. And I was like, oh, really? And they're like, yeah, what kind are you looking for? And I was like, you know, um, my first flute was, and I, I told them the history about flute and stuff. And um, what my professor said, I said, you know, my first flute was a Yamaha, and now I play on a Burkhart Rizona. And um, I said, I'm looking for either a Yamaha, and then I've also heard that buffets are really good, or buffets, or however you say it. So they were like, well, we have a Yamaha here, and I was like, okay, and then, um, they said, we also have a, like, limited edition buffet here, and I was like, oh, really, and they're like, yeah, so I was like, I know it's COVID and everything, but is there any way I can play, um, and try them out, and they're like, oh my gosh, absolutely, yes, um, and I was, and I think some of it is because they knew me, because I've been going to this place for years, so I, I went out there, <laughs> it's it quite a ways from where I live, and they had them there, and uh, I looked at the Yamaha first, and I was like, eh, it looks, I don't know, I just didn't like the way it looked. And then they pulled out this buffet, this limited edition, and I was like, I really like the way this looks. Now me being only knowing some clarinet stuff, um... I was like, okay, I'm going to try to play this, but I'm not like the clarinet extraordinaire person. And they're like, oh yeah, go ahead. So I was trying to play it and, you know, I was getting sounds out of it, but I was like, I really need to test this instrument and see if it's like the full range and everything and it, everything's good before I decide to purchase this. Meantime, I was on the phone with my former clarinet professor that I had, a former flute professor, and he was walking me through different stuff to look for and everything and he's like yeah if I were you and I would just not go with the Yamaha at all I would go with this buffet if you really want him um he and they live really far my professor does and he's like I can try to get down there but there's no guarantee and I was like no I'll see if someone in the shop plays clarinet and so one of the techs plays clarinet and he was able to play it, and I heard all the different uh, registers and, and, you know, the sound that it made. And I was like, I think this is my clarinet. And then I played some more on it, and I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one. So my professor was really proud. And this is like a, it's not a beginner, it's like an intermediate. And um, they said if I went with the Yamaha that I would end up having to upgrade uh, later on down the road and that was something I was not willing to do again so I just went ahead and put this one so give you some specs of this clarinet this is the Buffet Crampion it's made in France and it is the Zo Zoe edition um, so this is one that they made in between two different models um, this one came out I think early 2020 something like that and then they made the other model to replace this one so you know um this clarinet has never been played except for a demo at a high school and the high school director was like i absolutely love this clarinet and i think she was gonna buy it and then she decided not to and i was like that's fine i'll buy it so this is a buffet zoe um 
I still need to, you know, get a new mouthpiece because, yeah, this this mouthpiece, as my instructor said, he's like, buffets don't make good mouthpieces. Um, <laughs> so that's going to be a new investment and everything, but it is the classic, you know, um, looking clarinet, except it's got some wood, uh, looking grains in it. This is a wood clarinet. This is not a plastic clarinet. Um, that's what I wanted was a wood clarinet. I did not want no plastic. So yeah, I am a proud owner of a clarinet now. And now we're going to attempt to play this and um so yeah so it came the guy threw in another ligature so he gave this came with the metal ligature and then he gave me the leather one I personally like the leather one a lot better than the metal one because I can't hardly get a lot of good sound out of the metal one and I'll show you here let me see if <laughs> watch it proves me wrong <laughs> love the richness of it so I'm going to take this one off I'm not a fan of metal lig ligatures anyway because the one that I had the first time I had a leather uh, ligature and I really liked it so reeds was a whole new uh, baby to me the whole purchasing of the reeds and I was like oh my gosh so I am using a size three Van Dorn reed right now, and I think size three is pretty good. Um, so I want to stick with three for a while. Um, and what's crazy, I, because like I said, you know, I picked up saxophone, and I was playing a sax the other day, and I was on a size three there for the saxophone, but then I tried it and I couldn't get anything out of the three. So I ended up having to go down to a two and a half on that one. So it's weird. So let's see if this sounds any better. Again, I'm still trying to get used to it. So don't be like, oh my gosh, she wasted money. No. <laughs> positioning is totally different so another thing with this um, clarinet and the mouthpiece I had to buy the patches to put on top of here because my teeth were already digging into this mouthpiece so I bought the uh, little uh, mouthpiece patches that go on your mouthpiece to um, prevent you from biting into the mouthpiece let me pull my stand over here Look at some music. Try not to move that. Uh, I think we're pushing it with that one. Hang on. What does it again? Too daffy easy. it's not very loud um you know just getting used to the back pressure is one thing my goodness um but yeah I just wanted to share this with y'all because I was super excited super happy to get it so I highly recommend if you are interested in looking at a new instrument 
There is a place that's mainly in Texas um, that I know of. It's called Intune Music and Sound. And I'll be sure and link their uh, website below. They have awesome instruments there. And then they have awesome staff that know what they're talking about. And really work with you and super sweet. So I would go check them out if you are interested in that. Now you may be thinking, okay, this channel is called A Flutist Named Vivian. <laughs> um, well, it's still going to be flute related. We may uh, bring this bad boy out every now and then. Um, but, you know, flute is my main focus and my main passion and everything. So, we are still going to do flute related stuff. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, be sure and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And push that bell notification. And we will see y'all next time. Bye, guys. playing loud. I guess I'm scared of the camera. Oh well. Bye.